Hey party people, thank you for joining me for iSavvy's first video tutorial. iSavvy is all about incorporating art into design, so today we're going to show you how to make this seamless pattern in Illustrator by taking something you've either painted or drew and scanning it into Photoshop, clipping it, and then bringing it into Illustrator. So let's get started. I'm going to go into Photoshop. And this is what I originally painted. You can tell it's kind of dull. I know I'm not that great at sometimes cleaning my brush in between. Um, so I tend to get these dull colors sometimes, which is fine. And this is why we have Photoshop so we can edit this. You can go into here and you can click on hue and saturation and kind of liven it up a little bit, bring in some more saturation. You can change the color however you want, however you want to do it. And this is what I landed on right here. So you can see some blues and pinks and stuff in there, and it's definitely more vibrant and fun. And eventually what we want to get to is something like this, where the background is completely clipped out so we can use this and layer it in in Illustrator. So let me go back here and let me show you how I got there. There are plenty of different ways to clip out things in Photoshop. You can use a pen tool, you can use channels, there are so, so many different ways and I definitely recommend looking into the different ways. Um, on Google, you can just Google um, get rid of white background in Photoshop. But today, I'm going to show you how I did it. So I went to select and I went to color range and I select the white areas because that's what we want to take out. So you see this image right here, it is selecting the white areas and dark areas. So when I move it to the left a little bit more, you see some dark areas in the white background and we don't want that because that means it's gonna stay there. So we kind of want to get it to a spot where there's no darkness in the background at all, but it gets a pretty good contrast in the middle if that makes sense. So this is kind of pushing it a little bit. I'm gonna go probably right about here because I can always fill in those areas afterwards, which I'm going to show you how to do. So I'm about 105. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to go to Select Inverse. Then I'm going to make sure I have this selected. I'm going to go to Select and Mask. So most of the time it'll show you something like this where you can't really see exactly what's clipped. You can see the Photoshop background coming in, those white areas and flower, and we don't want that. We just want to take out the white areas in the background. So I like viewing it on this gray background, even though it says on black. And then I'm going to bring in some of these white areas into the flower. If you just want to leave it like that, that's totally cool. If you want some, you know, translucent thing coming in the background for your flower, then just clip it how it is and just hit OK. But I don't really want that. I still want the white in my flower. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to carefully bring in some white. And this is pretty rough for right now, so just bear with me. I could really go into these edges and get really detailed with it, but I think I'm just going to do it really quick just to show you guys how it works. So the edges are pretty rough. I want to smooth them out. I'm going to take the smooth bar and bring it up to about... 30-ish, and maybe we want to feather the edges a little bit, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to bring in some contrast. Contrast is really good for clipping because it's good at really getting the edges to pop. Let's see if it loads and see if you can see a difference. So, I don't know if you saw that, but bring it back down. See how it's a little softer? If you bring it up, it gets a little bit more contrasty in the edges. You pop a little bit more. Or the edges are a little bit more crisp. So I might want to shift the edge in a little bit to the left and then I'm going to hit OK. So it selected it for me. It's not perfect right there. You can tell it's not perfect for right now. This is totally OK. I just want to show you guys how this works. Then I'm going to come over to the layers panel and then I'm going to hit the mask. And voila! White background is gone. So I'm going to save that as clip, which I already did, so I'm not going to save it again. But I'll show you what I ended up with. This is the water watercolor flower clipped right here, and I saved it as a PSD to my desktop. 
and then I'm going to come over to Illustrator. This is what we landed on, but I'm just going to go to a completely new document to show you exactly how I did it. So I start off on 8.5 by 11. I think it's just a good size for people to see a pattern and it's a standard printer size that people can print out from home or wherever. So this is an 8.5 by 11. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and hit File, Place. And then I'm going to select my clipped watercolor flower and place it in here. And I'm just going to copy and paste different sizes and rotate different flowers just to give it some dimension. You can do this any way you want to do it. Maybe you want to fill the whole page with your flower. Totally up to you. So, one thing I'm going to show you on how to make a pattern. I do it kind of the old school way. So anything that's right here on this edge is going to repeat over on this side. A little bit hard to grasp, but basically how to trick this is if you put something in the corner, always remember that you have the X axis right here and you have your Y axis. If you're good at math in high school, this totally comes in handy. If not, it's just a refresher for you. This is the X and this is the Y. And up here in transform, we also have an X and Y axis. It tells you exactly where this object is located. So what I want to do is I literally want to copy it, command C, and then I want to paste it in place, which is shift command V. And then I'm literally going to go here to transform and I want it to go up eight and a half inch. I'm sorry, 11 inches. I want it to go up on the Y axis. So actually, which is kind of strange, you're going to go minus 11. Even though you want it to go up, you always think it's plus, but it's actually minus 11, and it just takes it right there for you. So I want these to also repeat in these corners. So I take these, and I copy, Command C, and then I'm just going to go edit, paste in place, and then I'm going to go to transform. Now I want it to move to the left on the x-axis. And the x-axis, I'm pretty sure negative 8.5 will take you to the left. And I was right. I always get it mixed up in my head. So you have your corners kind of filled out. You don't have to worry about that. Now, if you want a flower to kind of repeat on your edge right here, let me just bring this down inside a little size a little bit. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to edit paste in place. Then I'm going to go to transform and this is the X. I want it to move right over here to the left. So I'm going to go negative 8.5, hit enter, and it's right there. So you can fill this in as much as you want. For this tutorial, um, I'm not going to fill it in too much. But there is one thing I do want to show you that I added some drop shadow to this and came across a little issue with how I clipped it, so I'm gonna show you how to fix it. If you wanna add a drop shadow, I will show you how to do that. You go to Appearance, and you go to Style, Drop Shadow. Let's see what happens. Oh, actually it clipped very, very nice, Never mind. So last time I clipped it, I had some static here and I had to fix it in Photoshop, which is easy to do. Um, so let's just continue actually just keeping this drop shadow thing going on here. So, I'm going to keep this and make this a little darker. Bring this up about 30%. Hit OK. Cool. And just remember, if you do this on any of the pieces that are on the edge, your drop shadow is going to get twice as dark because it's repeating technically. So if you have a 30% drop shadow here, you want a 10% maybe drop shadow here. So. I'm going to go back over to this pattern and just kind of show you how I did it. So there's drop shadows here. These ones actually only have 10%. Now I'm going to show you how to make this into a pattern, which is pretty cool. There was actually a new feature in CC that makes it pretty simple for you to do. It used to be a lot harder and there used to be some like glitchy things that would always happen. 
So you want to make sure that you embed your images first. So in order to do this, you select everything. You go to the links. See how they're all selected? Go to the top right corner, embed images. You have the option to convert layers to objects. I do not recommend it. Let's just flatten the layers to a single image and hit OK. And you're going to keep hitting OK for every single one. Illustrator will not let you make a pattern unless you flatten them first. So just remember that. So now you have your flattened flowers ready to make a beautiful floral pattern. We're going to go, actually, no, we're going to select everything and then we're going to go to Object, Pattern, Make. So it says the new pattern has been added to the swatches panel, which is okay. They've already added a pattern. All right, fine, but we're going to do a little adjusting. So what we're going to do, see how it kind of repeats at this line? We don't really want that. Let me zoom out. We don't want the pattern to repeat at this blue box. We want it to repeat where how we had it. So we're going to take, we're going to click over here to the pattern tile tool. And we're actually going to drag this in. And see how it's adjusting as I drag it in. And normally I'm kind of a freak about it sometimes where I'll really get in here and get to the details and drag everything in. But this is good for right now. You can kind of see how that flower actually, let's zoom in. See how that flower is overlapping a little bit there? It's okay, it's gonna happen. You'll be able to fix it on your end. Just try to get a little bit more detailed with it and your pattern will be seamless and perfect. This is good for right now. So whatever you do when you're done with that, do not hit save a copy and then cancel because then it'll cancel it all together. I've done that numerous times. So we wanna save a copy, hit okay, okay, and then we want to hit done, cool. So, it saved a bunch in here, which is totally fine, but let's select the last one because that's the one we actually saved, and let's draw a pattern. Voila, you have a seamless flower pattern, which is pretty cool. So, I took it over here, and I actually put in kind of a yellow background but you can totally do any background you'd like. You can do blue, which I don't know if this one looks so good on like darker colors. I think that the light flowers look better on lighter pastel colors or maybe even, I haven't tried it with gray. I don't know if that looks good, but I chose to go in kind of like a blue or like a greenish yellow direction, which I thought was nice with these pink flowers. And like I said, you can totally edit these flowers in Photoshop to be any color you want with any color background you want. But that is pretty much it. If you guys like what you saw, please share with your friends. Hopefully this was simple and easy for you. If you have any other questions for me, I am totally available. Email me directly at info at isavvydesign.com. That's E-Y-E-S-A-V-V-Y. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your time.